Diane Stark, part of the Coptic family now and uh, well ingrained into the Unity teachings. Uh, she is a Unity minister from Muskegon, graduated from the University of Maryland in years past, a degree in education, and uh, she's been active in Unity churches wherever she has lived, whether it's Los Angeles, New Jersey, Silver Springs, Maryland, and the Kansas City area. In 2003, she was overwhelmed with a desire to apply for the ministerial program and was ordained in 2006 at Unity Village, and she became, or she came to Michigan in uh, 2007 from Unity Institute and uh, the Ministerial Training School at the World Headquarters, once again, near Kansas City, is where she went through her training. She's been involved with Unity of Muskegon since 2008, teaching the children and guest speaking as well at uh, various locations. Uh, she has spent her life dedicated towards children and a child advocate conducting youth education in Unity Spiritual Centers from Washington, D.C. to Leavenworth, Kansas. And Diane is committed to embracing the truth and applying it so to each of us can experience fulfillment while being in love. Her two grown daughters uh, reside in Los Angeles and Berlin, respectively, and Diane was born in the Unity family. Uh, with her mother, actively studied Unity teachings throughout her entire life, and she continues to do so. Unity is a way of life that embraces the soul's journey into a new consciousness where all people can live in harmony and abundance, in Diane's words. Committed, you, com committed to spiritual living in a wonderful community with the Unity community and now the, the Coptic family as well. Consciousness States is her topic tonight, and we look forward to that in a few moments. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me. It's lovely to see everyone. And um, I, uh, whenever John calls me up and asks me to give a talk, you know, I try to tune into what I'm thinking about, what's foremost in my mind in the moment, you know. And so this is it, <laughs> is what I've been thinking about. And it's exactly, Rose, it's exactly what you ended up on in that um, selection, um, talking the same thing. And, and that's what drew me to Coptics, is that uh, we're in this conversation about consciousness and cultivating the higher states of awareness of, of transcendent spirit. So this is a little bit of a, um, a diagrammatic uh, I want to say diagrammatic talk to identify different states of consciousness in their level of progress toward complete realization of oneness. Now, uh, I don't know if anybody but me finds this fascinating, but I find this absolutely, you know, fascinating, amazing to think about the different consciousness states. Now, Consciousness has become um, actually a subject of scientific inquiry and, and, and academic um, definition and everything, but I'm not really talking about consciousness in the broad sense. I'm talking about consciousness as a state of being, a state of consciousness that a person uh, generates over time with habitual thoughts, feelings, attitudes, behaviors, choices. Are you with me? You know what I mean? Okay, a state of consciousness of an individual. And I'm not familiar enough with Hamid Bey's writings, but I've come across so many places where he sounds exactly like Charles Fillmore, who I have studied thoroughly. And so I trust that this will not contradict anything in the Coptic uh, teachings. And I think that it will, it will parallel it in many ways. But anyway, we begin by saying that for, uh, for what you call animal life, that the beginning state of consciousness is simple consciousness. And we say that, the, that Adam and Eve were in simple consciousness in the Garden of Eden. And that means that a creature looks in the mirror and does not see themselves because they are not aware of themselves. And then they graduate to self-consciousness, where they look in the mirror and do see themselves. Now, in this realm of self-consciousness, 
of being aware that you exist. Well, this is what the earth plane is the laboratory for graduating from, I think. And there are so many ways of experiencing self-consciousness. And I, I'm very familiar with, with these terms that I'd like to introduce you to, if you don't already know them, um, for describing the different states of being in this consciousness that is aware of itself, but not yet aware of anything beyond itself, okay? So that, so there are two uh, conditions that are talked about in, in unity metaphysics. And one is personal consciousness. And that is illustrated, different kinds of personal consciousness are illustrated throughout the Bible and in the Bible personality. But, and there's a lot of a talk about it in our basic textbook, Lessons in Truth, that talks about this, this one chapter called Personality and Individuality. Now, the semantics of describing the aspects of human nature have, have crossed over and flip-flopped in so many different ways that it can be very confusing. And the semantics I'm using tonight are, I admit, are very old school. <laughs> Uh, and they were um, adopted before the diagnostic tools of personality disorders ever existed. So this is pretty uh, actually simple and uh, broad strokes. But personal consciousness identifies a way of being where... Um, we are in bondage to what we think is our identity and relative to other what we think is other people's identity. So this is the area where we feel jealousy, where we feel inferiority, superiority, where we feel um, competition, where we feel um, the appetites of personal identity that are that are steeped in materiality. Basically, it is a state of consciousness that is in separation from awareness of the divine. And then there's another main uh, chunk, main avenue of self-consciousness that, uh, I'll tell you, the Fillmores were very big on this, called sense consciousness. And in a way, it's kind of puritanical. And um, it says that, when we are in bondage to the gratification of physical senses, or when we are in, ban in bondage to believing the information that we take in through our physical senses, or what we call appearances, that is sense consciousness. And I just want to say that over the years, I've just had glimpses of insight that self consciousness, when we are completely self-involved when a person's uh, consciousness is not including anything transcendent beyond itself, that way lies madness. Truly, literally, that is what leads to the extremely unhealthy states of mental illness. So, to transcend, to get away from, to get beyond this self-consciousness realm. The next step is spiritual consciousness. And that is the birth of love. That is the awakening of the capacity to love in the heart. And that's what Christmas is. That's why Christmas just takes over the whole world. It's, it's just the most significant, the most, the most mind-shifting uh, breakthrough that human beings can ever make. And it, it has everything to do with Jesus Christ. It's the birth of the capacity to love in the heart, which Jesus conferred upon us, which he represents. So as we begin then to awaken to spiritual consciousness, and come into our power to be love, 
to feel love, to create love, to channel love, and come to know what love is, that love is not liking something, love is not uh, feeling gratified by having something, oh, I love that, but love is an energy that unifies, that harmonizes, that heals. And we can create that energy, we can channel that energy, we can be blessed by that energy. And that is spiritual consciousness being lived out. But then beyond that then, is that's where we say, where, where, where we use the term Christ consciousness in this, in this diagram. Uh, so Christ consciousness is another step beyond spiritual consciousness, where a person then attains the power to heal, to preach, to teach, to, um, to minister, to, to lead, to bless. Christ consciousness has that aspect of being empowered to um, articulate and to demonstrate and to confer upon other people a blessing to make a difference, to cause a shift, I would say. To be that savior that Jesus embodies. And then, <laughs> well, if you want to go beyond that, <laughs> it's it gets kind of you know i don't like to claim that it can be known what is beyond christ consciousness so if there is anything right some some people like to say god consciousness which means realization of our oneness with the allness and then we um kind of lose the boundary between self and the rest of the cosmos who knows i don't know we'll just have to evolve and see <laughs> But for now, what we do, what, what, what this means is, the point here is that thinking of oneself, thinking of what one wants, what one needs, one, what one feels, what one likes, dislikes, what one has, thinking of how we look, of how we are going over, of how we are succeeding or failing, all this is self-involved. I mean, we've kind of forgotten the simple Christian principle. Think of others. Serve, contribute, join the team, grow yourself in competence and skill to the end of giving more, contributing more. Because being completely self-involved, as I said, that is very unhealthy. While it is true that we must be responsible for our self-care, that we must take responsibility to heal whatever wounds we carry from the past in that little inner child we have. Yes, but it is also true that we must choose what consciousness we are cultivating. When young people have inferiority complex or insecurity or anxiety and depression, or, or identity problems. It's a, it's a maturation process that disappears when one is able to think of others, think of service to the community and lessen that thinking about self. And I was given this advice twice in my life and it was, it was truly a sacred message and an important clue on the journey to spiritual consciousness. Yeah, I can remember as a child, my mother told me, and, and she was a unity minister. And she would tell me, Diane, don't think about yourself. Think about others. Think about other people, because thinking about yourself will keep you in personal consciousness. It will keep you in sense consciousness. It will prevent you from unfolding and progressing and attaining a higher level of awareness. And then the second time that it happened to me was later in college. Um, I lived in a dormitory on the University of Maryland and the president of our dormitory was this beautiful girl named Lillo Way. Lillo Way is her name. I admired her so much for, for one thing, she was beautiful. She was a dance major 
She had beautiful long blonde hair that she wore up in a braid around the top of her head like a crown. And she had said to us, you know, if any of you girls, you know, if you have any problems, feel free to come and talk to me about it. She said it so lovingly. And I heard through the grapevine that her background was that she was raised, raised in Christian science, another metaphysical religion. And so I was feeling really troubled about going into the dining hall in college. It was a huge, you know, crowd on there all the time. And when I entered the dining hall, it seemed like everyone just stopped and turned their head and stared at me. And I felt so uncomfortable and inferior. So I went to Lillo Way and I told her, I said, you know, when I walk into the dining hall, I just feel so inferior and I feel like everyone's staring at me. And she said, well, you know, Diane, when you feel inferior, it's kind of the same as feeling superior. It's just thinking about yourself. Just stop. Just don't do it. Make another choice. Just think of something else. <laughs> and I, I was like, yeah, I remember. I, I, I knew that. And I, I forgot. I forgot. And so I did. I just stopped. I just dropped that whole conversation out of my head and enjoyed a whole new approach to being in the world when I stepped into that, dorm, dorm, that dining hall. So, and you know, I tried to try find out whatever happened to Willow Way. I thought she was so extraordinary. And do you know that she, when I looked up, uh, looked her up on the internet, I found that she had her own dance studio in New York City. Quite extraordinary lady. So I say to you today that states of consciousness that you choose to develop to cultivate your thoughts and feelings and attitude, that becomes your mode of existence. And our lesson on this earth plane is to free ourselves from the illusion of separateness. To realize that we are all of the same divine energy that God is. To discern that we are not in any type of popularity contest with others, nor are we in dependency upon any sensation to be fulfilled. We are, each of us, eternal, perfect, whole, and free. Know this and be blessed by it. Amen. A couple words that come to mind to, with, with your presentation tonight. It's, it's that loving nature that you have. And uh, I thank you for presenting your, your background, your, your inspiration, and the different states of consciousness, Diane. And it's, it's, we get so caught up into the personal level that uh, we need to soar up into the spiritual side of things. And... What a wonderful, incredible reminder of that tonight, once again. Would anybody else like to share some comments of, of the different consciousness we're going through? I just want to say I feel Diane's love. <laughs> I feel your consciousness. And uh, I like what you had to say about, you know, when you get to feeling less than or something inferior. To just quit thinking about yourself. Yeah. I, like that. I really do. I think that could help a lot of people. So. And you're very loving, Diane. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was a little afraid of giving this talk because people are always telling me, Diane, you don't address the inner child work enough. No, <laughs> no we have to take care of our, <laughs> we have to take care of our, uh, ourselves the s the small s and the big s and you know and, and you know that that's sort of a both and area it's sort of a contradiction in spiritual teachings mm -hmm. yes we do but we also have to transcend it and and uh, just to make just choose to be i i think choose to be more aware of divinity uh, of the of the truth and that quickens our 
our whole thought process and takes us to a, a different context, perhaps. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. It brought to mind for me um, a line from the Course, uh, Course in Miracles. Um, I am not a body. I am free, for I am as God created me. Mm. I am yeah. not a body. I am free. Yeah. Mm. For I am as God created me. The, the whole mental health community now has so many categories of different personality uh, maladjustments you know we have an awful lot of uh, poorly adjusted personality such states that we are ha have described and 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 researched and everything and it's sad when people are so much in bondage to a state of being that that that's not aware <laughs> of the power that we have Mm-hmm. Well, and, and so that's where that's what I find all throughout Hamid Bay, eh? That's what I found all throughout what he's what he's saying to us all the time. What's that saying? It's I can't remember the way it starts, but it ends in and thinking makes it so. Um, yeah. your reality is your thinking. Yeah. And if we just had some Somebody come and say, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. And like slap you across the face. Okay, stop thinking like that. Move on. Move into this area or, you know. Yeah. And, and I, always, I always say our, 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 our being, we are self-healing and self-cleansing. And whatever wounds there are, embedded in the subconscious uh, memory of, of our of our mind of our consciousness they come up to be healed they come up of their own you know our our being brings them up to the surface for us to confront and transform oh. it has come up to be healed as they say when i think of you diane i think of universal oneness you embody so many different philosophies within one person, namely you. And what you gave us tonight was actually took us to another dimension because what, what you're talking about is something about being there for others, or just thinking for others, of not only this country, but other countries. That we are here to serve all people of all nations. I think that is, is the next step, to send them light and love. Because I think the world is a family, and we're all part of this family. And you really promote and express that. And what you share with tonight can take us to another level of love. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Diane, your mother gave you a lot of encouragement <laughs> when you were growing up, and she said to get out of yourself. I think, I think you mentioned in your presentation. Yeah, <laughs> she she said she said you know if you think about yourself, Diane, that's just going to keep you stuck in that in the lower consciousness realms. Wow, <laughs> greater <laughs> place. That that was such a gift. And how old were you when she told you that? And you I, was like about, I was like about eight. <laughs> eight. <Really? laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and, no you know, heard. she was a minister. She was just bubbling over with, with truth ideas all the time. And she just wanted to tell anybody who'd listen. So whenever I'd be riding in the car with her, she'd be telling me this stuff. And I'd be going, that, ah. explains, <laughs> that explains why you are who you are. <laughs> your background was and you know you heard that all your life yeah great and and uh <laughs> and i my soul chose that you know i i wanted that and i'll tell you a little story about myself so when i started kindergarten being born in january i was a little bit a little bit older than everybody else 
and um, <laughs> the teacher said that all I did in kindergarten was go around to all the children who were crying and, and solve their problems. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that I wasn't well adjusted and that I should, <laughs> that they should put me a, a year ahead because I was acting like everybody's mother. <laughs> so they did, I skipped first grade. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I remember in the kindergarten, all I heard was a bunch of kids crying. I couldn't stand it. So I'd go over and say, Why are you crying? He took my toy. Give it a toy back. And then <laughs> <laughs> And Diane, I bet you were taller than most of the kids too, weren't yeah, you? Yeah. I was taller. And even after I skipped a grade, I was still the tallest one. Yeah. I was always the tallest one. So you were a force to be dealt with. <laughs> yeah the teacher but I wasn't I wasn't very well coordinated I could never play sports very well the teacher you know the teacher put you in another grade because you were ahead of her <laughs> <laughs> well I look back and I think what exactly was the problem with that I would have loved to have had a kid like that when I was a teacher yeah yeah right <laughs> well I was thinking a good example of somebody that um stands out is following what you were saying is like Oprah Winfrey who grew up in a very poor home and she was abused and mistreated as a child and had she just worried about herself yeah where would she be today I mean she yeah. she has gone out of her way to help other people and she's made such a great success and has helped I don't know how many thousands or millions of people all around the world I mean, by giving of herself and serving and you know that to me is an maybe an extreme example but she started in the lowliest of low as far as you know all the things that happened to her as a child and so I was trying to think who else I'm sure there are many others um and oh I we know yeah, there's a story about um, Bill Bojangles Robinson. You know, he was he was born in Richmond, Virginia. He was an orphan and homeless. Hmm. And he grew up to be a tap dancer in the movies yes. with Shirley, Shirley Temple. Yes. And the way he learned to dance was he would follow the parades going through town as a child of the, of the people coming in to do, um, what is that called? Vaudeville? And they'd be dancing down the street and he studied what they were what they did just by watching and he taught himself to dance that way and he went into vaudeville himself and became a world renowned mm -hmm. he was the highest paid black actor in the world at one point he never learned to read and write mm -hmm. but he would he would go around he would go through harlem and if he saw any family that was struggling financially he'd just pay their way out of it oh is yeah. is he who they wrote the song about, Mr. Bojangles? No, that's just a coincidence. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he's somebody who he could have said, nobody cares about me. I don't have anybody yeah. to love me. I don't have anything. And he turned it all around, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, I know they say one of the best ways to get out of a funk is to look at somebody else who needs help. And there's always somebody who's in a worse situation than you are. And if you do something with them or to help them, you end up feeling a whole, like a whole different person. And so mm -hmm. that's what you're saying is give, serve others yeah. and get your mind off from your own, what you think are problems. Mm -hmm. You're probably just <laughs> a kick in the seat to get you moving to do something. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very yeah. Good. Excellent. So what's interesting to me is when there's a topic called consciousness state, that could go in any direction whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And Rose had no contact with you, didn't want to give your talk, and yet it's magical, right? Isn't everything magical? That yeah. you both were on the same page about service of others for a state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. I think it's just marvelous. Mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, 
Yeah, and that that's always the way. <laughs> yeah, synchronicity. Yeah. And truth is truth. It doesn't matter who who said it. It it's all the same truth. It comes from the same original source um, from spirit, you know, from our creator. And it comes out in different places at different times with perhaps different words, but it's the same basic. Mm -hmm. You know, love your neighbor as yourself, you know, help others. Your brothers be your brother's keeper. Um, I, th I think, thank you. <laughs> Very excellent message. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Wonderful. Thanks. My favorite word on Sundays, I like another Thanks. enlightening hour of, of light and love. And 